no crying. Hey, 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 hey. There's, There's no, no crying, crying in baseball. baseball. I'm Natalie Zeroni, and welcome to Prime Video's A League of Their Own new series breakdown. You might be thinking, wait a minute, doesn't A League of Their Own already exist? Hasn't it existed for the past, oh, 30 years? And you'd be right! But hold your horses, partner, because this ain't your average reboot. Today, we're going to look at what's the same and what's different between the new series, now streaming on Amazon Prime, and the original 1992 movie. Or as I like to call it, the League of Their Own Cinematic Universe. And P.S. League of Their Own fans, the 1992 original is also available to stream for free on Amazon Prime. It's a Leagueathon miracle! Don't forget to subscribe to Amazon Prime Video on YouTube for more videos like this. We want to know what you want to see here, so also feel free to comment below. Right off the bat, see what I did there? The most obvious similarity is that they both exist in the same universe at the same time, with the same backstory, and following the same real-life team. That same time is 1943 the year the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League, or AAGPBL, was formed. This league actually existed from 1943 to 1954 and was a precursor to modern-day women's professional league sports in the U.S. The series and movie also share the same backstory. We're all aware that women were not really encouraged to do anything besides pop out babies until well into the 20th century, so what sparked the formation of this league? World War II baby and a simple formula of supply and demand. There was a lacking supply of male baseball players who were being shipped off to fight in the war, but since this is America, there was still a raging demand for baseball, and hence, lady baseball players. You'll also notice the same uniforms while watching both the series and movie. The Rockford Peaches were the actual, real-life women's baseball team, and also the most successful one in the league. While most of the characters are women, A League of Their Own, the series, also shares a similar male role first introduced in the original movie. Who can forget Tom Hanks as manager Jimmy Duggan? In the new series, he's succeeded by Nick Offerman as coach Casey Dove Porter. Technically, they're different characters, but they share the same iconic qualities. Former pro baseball players, lazy, kind of shitty attitudes, battling personal demons, and maybe a heart of gold. Hey. Great job, kid. Probably. Now that we've covered the brass tacks, let's get into some headier themes the series and movie share. Like the constant sexism women baseball players faced. The owners of the women's teams were afraid the players would be seen as too manly and wanted the players to quote, radiate femininity and the highest ideals of womanhood. Can womanhood survive the Rockford Peaches? What kind of journalism well, is for this? For Pete's sake, Vivian, will you please read it? Sounds like my mother. Me too. First women head to the factories losing their feminine refinement, and now they pick up baseball bats and fight to the death to see who can oh, be the most come masculine. Come on, fight to the That's death? That's a little right far-fetched. Just put the nail in the, the coffin death. right there, huh? These grown-ass women were assigned a female chaperone to enforce the strict code of conduct that they were expected to follow. Both the movie and series also show the real-life beauty and charm school the women were subjected to after hours of daily ball practice. This was all in an effort to appear more ladylike on the field, and thus more palatable to a patriarchal society. The hair, soften and shorten. The eyebrows, thin and separate, there should be two. Don't forget the skirts, which are, of course, not really conducive to playing professional baseball. These skirts are just, I mean, how am I supposed to squat in this? They're gonna see my everything. But let's end these similarities on a happy note the through line of female friendships. Time and again, both the series and original movie take time to develop female characters and their relationships with each other. In the 1992 movie, sisters Dottie and Kit, played by Gina Davis and Lori Petty, go through all the ups and downs of sibling rivalry. In the end, the bond of not only family, but friendship is cemented well beyond their years on the Rockford Peaches. Oh. 
The most memorable female friendship in the original League of Their Own might be between all the way Mae Morbidito and Doris Murphy. I mean, how can you not love watching the fun and feisty friendship between two literal queens, Madonna and Rosie O'Donnell? It's my friend Doris, best player on the team. Thank you, May. You're the best. <laughs> and Rosie O'Donnell is the perfect segue into what's different between the two League of Their Owns. Because, spoiler alert, she also makes an appearance in the League of Their Own series. We'll give you a tiny tease. Hello. Hi. First time? Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Okay, okay, not too much. That's it. Cut it off. Even though they're in the same universe and time, the original movie and series have completely different storylines and characters. You won't recognize any familiar names in the new series, but you might recognize some faces. Co-creator Abby Jacobson plays Carmen Shaw, a player who runs away from her marriage and joins the Women's League as a catcher. And that, by the way, appears to be an homage to Gina Davis's original Dottie character, who is also a catcher. He's under it. There's also Darcy Carden as Greta Gill, Shantae Adams as Max Chapman, Kate Berlant as Shirley... Wait a second, this isn't a character breakdown video. We got the picture. They're different characters. Moving on. We're saving the major topics for last, because the biggest ways A League of Their Own the series differs from the original is by tackling themes like racism head on. The original movie hinted at the very real historical fact that only white or white passing women were allowed in the women's league. Ah. But the series explores the theme of racism in a major way, first and foremost by introducing us to Max Chapman. Look, we're not gonna have color girls playing with our girls. Going home. Oh, just give me one shot. One minute to throw for you. I promise you go on me pitching at every game. I know how to put on a show. Look, if you don't get out of here now, I'll have you run off. Max is a composite character based on real life Negro League women's players who broke the glass ceiling back in the day. She's an incredible pitcher, but the color of Max's skin means she doesn't have a chance in hell to play for the All-American Girls League. Through the lens of life in racially segregated Illinois, the series explores the near constant barriers and discrimination Max and other black people at the time faced. Remember when I mentioned that only white and white passing women were allowed in the league? Unlike the original movie, we're also introduced to Latina characters who played with the Peaches. The series gets into the complicated dynamics of how, in this case, white Latinas were viewed and treated through the characters of Lupe Garcia and Esti Gonzalez. Lupe is Mexican, but presented as Spanish in public, since that's far more palatable to the fans. Esti is one of the youngest players on the Rockford Peaches and comes to the team straight from Cuba. Represent. She doesn't speak a word of English, and the series explores how that affects her experience. Last but not least, A League of Their Own the series dives into queerness and LGBTQ characters and topics in a way the original film only hinted at. It's now a known historical fact that the All-American Girls League was a secret safe haven for lesbians. In real life, many of the athletes were lesbian, but because of the environment and time, they had to keep that secret except to some close friends and teammates. Even though Rosie O'Donnell has publicly said she interpreted her character in the original movie as lesbian. None of the other boys ever uh, always made me feel like I was wrong, you know? Like I was some sort of a weird girl or a strange girl, or, or not even a girl, just because I could play. Director Penny Marshall said no, she wasn't. And there's no obvious hint in the film of any of the players being lesbian. But in A League of Their Own, the series, the queer experience in 1940s America is one of its biggest themes. To keep it in very general, non-spoilery terms, the series covers multiple lesbian love stories, characters discovering and coping with their gender and sexuality in a world where they have to keep it a secret, violent homophobia, and so much more. So, you both have been with women since we've been here? No. <laughs> yes, yes, you could say that. So there you have it, folks. We've covered all the ins and outs of the League of Their Own cinematic universe. Don't forget to watch A League of Their Own, the new original series on Amazon Prime, streaming now. 
Once again, this is Natalie Zeroni, and thank you for watching Amazon Prime Video. Dad, why'd you name yourself Richard? He was like, because I want to be rich. Did you wash your hands? Of course not. Oh my gosh! You ever use smoke? Same heart attack, different afterlife. Whoa, 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 high five. Even if I did know where the Antichrist was, I wouldn't tell you we're on opposite sides. I rather enjoy being on fleek. <gasps> I ate a bug.